Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, Healing the Shaman's Way. I'm your host, Dr. Norman Wilson. We're coming live to you via talk show today out of Colorado. I have a very special guest with me today, and I'm just so delighted to have this talented lady. Uh, not only is she an artist, uh, she is a Reiki master and has been practicing Reiki for many years. She's also an author. Uh, she uh, just about does anything she damn well pleases, and that's the best way I could put it. That would you welcome me, Susan Bradford. Hello, Susan. Hi, Norm. How are you this morning? Oh, great, thanks. Nice to have you with me today. And It's very nice to be here. I want to ask you uh, some questions about your involvement in Reiki. Uh, as you know, I'm a Reiki master also, and I, I want to know how you got started in that. You know, as much of my life, I got started by accident. A friend of mine. And you're an um, accident. Yeah, happy accidents. But um, but a friend of mine uh, in back in 1989, when Reiki was not a household word at all, uh, was studying Reiki with uh, we. I was living in Pennsylvania, Northeast Pennsylvania at the time, in the Pocono Mountains. And so she wanted to practice on me. And I said, okay, sure, why not? And I, um, even way back then, suffered on and off with sciatic pain. So it was, I was having a bout of it at that moment. And so she worked on me and lo and behold, the pain went away. And I said, oh, I need to have this. I need to have this in my own body and in my hands. And at the time, I wasn't really thinking, I certainly was never thinking about doing it in any way. I really wanted it to make myself a better artist. I wanted to have that energy flowing through me and out my hands. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that was really my sole purpose in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But as life happens. Uh, I ended up by 1996 um, being a Reiki master teacher myself and beginning a whole other, a whole other life. One of the things that's always fascinated me about Reiki is that you can do it long distance. Yes. And there have been several studies that it actually works long distance. Yes. Particularly coming out of England. And I understand that you have clients that you work with long distance. One of the things that I was chastised years ago about when I was doing long distance, I had 12 clients and I did them for free. And people told me I was a fool for doing that. And then because they said a gift all the time is never really appreciated and put to use. Oh, well, that might be right. I don't know. I haven't started charging big money yet. But I understand you do. Is that correct? Do you charge? I do. Yes. And okay. uh um, may I ask, how do you do that? How do I decide yeah, what do you to have charge? A fee? Do you have a, 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 a oh, fee? I have a sliding fee. Sliding fee. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. okay. I have a suggested amount that mm -hmm. I would like to get, mm -hmm. but also during the well. Let me let me preface this by saying that normally my practice is not necessarily a long distance practice. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do like to touch people and and therefore that is the most ideal way of doing it however all through my life i've had long distance clients and right now during the pandemic it's all long distance yes so so for now during this time period where so many people are financially strapped my scale is all over the place. It's really donate whatever you feel you can, what's in your heart in this moment, in this time. Um, but I never, ever will turn anyone away for any reason, even, but I do believe in the exchange of energy. So if somebody comes in and says, here's a dollar, I say, great. <laughs> um, so. That's the way it's always been. And I think that's a, that's a nice way to do it. And that, uh, therefore, those who really need it, get it. Yes. Who have something to share, can. Yes. And, 
it's it's sort of the philosophy I have always followed: pay it forward. Yes, if it comes back exactly. That, exactly, okay, that's good. Okay, um, so you do most of your clients now long distance. When you do them live, uh, do you do them where you live now or back in Pennsylvania? I do. <laughs> Strangely enough, my practice is still mostly back in Pennsylvania. Yes. So I have been, I moved out west 15 years ago, and I have been going back to Pennsylvania, to Delaware Water Gap, Pennsylvania, cutest little town in the world. Um, and four times a year and I keep a very small space there that's very affordable so I can do that and I go and I stay for about three weeks at a time and I'm busy from the moment I get in the door to the very last moment I leave and then I come back out west to my home on Camino Island and I huh, I breathe and I relax and I regroup mm -hmm. and I do have some clients here but not very many Mm -hmm. um, now, after this, we don't know what's going to happen. So life is changing. It is, and, it, and it's okay. It's always been that way. Always been that and, way. And we we yep. need to just to calm down and go along with the flow of things. Exactly. God, yes. That's wonderful. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I also yeah. understand that you have a, a interest in shamanism, which is my I do. And uh, how did you happen to get involved with that? Do you do any shamanic practice? Do you combine that with your reiki, for example? I do. Mm -hmm. uh, I combine everything with everything, basically. So mm -hmm. um, I got into shamanism kind of by accident, too. Mm -hmm. I was uh, selected by a teacher to study with her way back in, um, I think it was like 97 or 98. And she had been a student at Barbara Brennan School of Healing, mm -hmm. and but also did some shamanic work herself. Mm -hmm. So she combined the Barbara Brennan work with shamanism, and I studied with her for seven years. And I also studied with uh, another woman who was a Barbara Brennan graduate and who was connected to Hawaiian shamanism. And... Mm -hmm. had a living teacher, Kahuna, Auntie Pua. And mm -hmm. so I was fortunate enough to be able to study with Auntie Pua a bit as well. And we did two different trips to Hawaii with her, and mm -hmm. it was amazing. So I am definitely not a shaman, uh, but I do use the basic tool of shamanic mm -hmm. journeying, and I use the medicine wheel to inform my personal life and my life as a teacher and my life as a practitioner. Okay, that, that's interesting because I uh, use uh, shamanism techniques with Reiki and vice versa. Uh, Absolutely. There, there's a natural flow of energy there as far as I'm concerned. You Absolutely. You feel that yourself, actually feel that, that transfer and c combinations that go on naturally. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I also incorporate crystals and essential oils. Do you do that? Minimally. Mm -hmm. I love them both. Um, mm -hmm. I don't really profess to, to be very knowledgeable about them. Mm -hmm. So it's intuitive with me. I have a ton of crystals. Mm -hmm. Many of them were just given to me, and I don't really buy many of them. Um, and I, so I, I just use them very intuitively. If something will just tell me, hey, here, hold this while we do the session or put this on your heart while we do the session. And I'm really not sure why. Um, I really am not. I have to be very honest about it. But they are very powerful and they, I, I need them in my life for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I uh, use everything I can. Uh, you know, I know, and you know a lot about crystals, and I know you know I, a lot about I'm gonna ask a, another question that's sort of a stick in the mud with me. Uh, I know that I was trained uh, in Reiki to begin with the head and work forward. I choose to work beginning at the feet. And mm -hmm. I, I don't know, do you have any feelings about whether 
the feet or the head should be the place you begin. Uh, I think it doesn't really matter. And oh. sometimes, you know, I've studied so many other things as well. Mm -hmm. So I, I also do Jin Chin Jitsu, ac acupressure. Mm -hmm. um, I've studied um, a Thai massage where you, you put your hand um, on the back, first chakra, first rear chakra, and you know, like the abdomen and the, and the um, sacrum. And you'd hold there for quite a long time until you're told where to go. Sometimes if there's an imbalance in the body or somebody's feeling pain, I'll begin right on the pain. Okay. Um, so yeah. I, just, I just do whatever comes to me. I, I, I always ask uh, uh, Usui Sensei, the founder of Reiki, to be with me. Mm -hmm. and, and I feel very guided. Yeah. I feel that you can begin wherever the client has indicated they have an issue. Yes. And you don't always have to do the whole body. Uh, with that. I also do a scan beforehand. Mm -hmm. do, do a scan. Now, do you use your hand? Do you use a pendulum? Uh, how do you do your scan? I've done all of, I've used a pendulum. I've used a feather. Mm -hmm. I've used my hands um, all through the years very, very differently. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, mostly I'm using my hands. Mm -hmm. But every once in a while, I haven't used a pendulum in a very, very long time. Um, but every once in a while, I'll just look at a feather. Well, especially if I'm in Pennsylvania and I have a beautiful jar with all my feathers in it. And I'll just say, hmm, I'll use this feather today. So it depends kind of in a way if I feel the mm -hmm. session is going more in a shamanic way or more in a Reiki Chin Chin way. Mm -hmm. They're always all there. I can't really separate them. But there's sometimes, you know, like if you're, if you're really specifically, um, someone will ask for a power animal and I'll say, oh, okay. Then I'll do my scan with a feather. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, I find that uh, I don't use the pendulum very much anymore. Yeah. And I guess- I don't think it's accurate. Yeah, I don't, well, because if I'm holding it out like this, you know, there's this tendency, you know, for it to do a little vibration on its own, and that can be misinterpreted very easily. And yes. I'm a little hesitant on that basis. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I want to shift gears out of this now, and let's, let's talk about the artist in you. Okay. Uh, I've had privilege of seeing a couple of your works, and uh, tell us about what, how would you classify your style? Um, uh, various. <laughs> so there's, there's three things I do, basically. Yes. I'm a painter. I paint mostly abstract. Mm -hmm. um, what you see in the background is very old, so it's not indicative of newer work. But I do a lot of circles. I do a lot. But those colors are kind of my colors. Blues and greens and oranges mm -hmm. are the colors that I love. They're very soft in a way, so it's not a hard edge abstraction. Um, I feel like they're very spiritual. I feel like I am manifesting energy in mm -hmm. my work. Um, so there's that. Then I make baskets, and I began making baskets about 11 or 12 years ago, once I moved out west here. And I've always loved baskets, and then all of a sudden there was this opportunity to take classes in basketry. So I've, I've taken a lot of classes, and now I pretty much do my own thing. You have one to show me? I do. Right. I can show you um, this is, well, now that we are in, uh, I don't know if you can really see this well, um, I just hold it still. Okay, hold it still. Perfect. But it, yes. it's seagrass. And then inside, it's, it's woven with a fur yarn that's gray. Okay. 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 And it has an egg, which is <laughs> a ball of yarn. Yeah. 
inside a woven little structure and there'll be another egg or two. And so basically I am nesting mm -hmm. during this pandemic and creating nests. Okay, very good. Okay. Um, and then my third form is my commercial work and that's mandalas. So it comes straight from my soul, but the manifestation of these mandalas can produce an image that is easily reproduced on anything. Mm -hmm. And, and that is, um, um, they, they are sellable, they're sellable. So I make, I create the mandala, I begin, I've been doing it for probably 12 years. The first one came when I got the flu. And I, <laughs> strangely enough, right? And I don't really get sick. And I said, ah, what is this about? And then I had no energy to be in my studio. So I just was doing these little line doodles and all of a sudden, this mandala came. So the first one is called health. And they're always a single word. The word always comes first. And then the imagery comes from the word. And I begin in the center and work out. Okay. And you have one to show us? I have many to show you. Okay. Um, I, have, um, I have a book of them. These are all reproductions. But, well, this is just the one I opened to, so this is the one I'll show you. Um, oops. So it's balance. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it has a kind of a, people tell me this all the time, that they think it feels like, like a little Mayan to them. Um, Very much so. Mm -hmm. But they're not all like that. So different one. Uh, newest. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a, it reproduced a little dark, so... Um, so, but it's courage. Okay. So I thought I would be doing one during this time, but nothing has really popped mm -hmm. up. So I'm not doing them. So anyway, from those, uh, from, from these, from the originals of those, I create G clay prints. Mm -hmm. I create uh, glass, tempered glass platters, mm -hmm. co sets of coasters, tote bags, it must be something else. I can't remember. Um, and, oh, and night lights. Okay. Um, uh, if someone wanted to borrow, buy one of your baskets, for example, or one of your uh, mandalas, how would they get a hold of you to do so? They would contact me from my email. I do have an Etsy site, but I don't really keep it up. And, um, it, and not much of my work is on there at this point. Okay, do you you so, don't have then a separate website for you? I have a website. They can look at the work oh. on the website, but I do not have the products up on the website either. I'm not a very good marketer. I'm sorry, but just the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, I, I'm, I'm hesitant to ask for your email address. So I, because this is, I don't mind. Well, it goes all over and I didn't want you to be harassed by people who are just, you know, bugging you. Uh, so, but I'm always happy to I'm be sure reached by people. Be able to buy some of your things. They're beautiful. Thank um, you. To get in touch with you. So you want to put, give me your website, your email address. And we'll, and yes. We'll, and we'll the website, I'll give you both. And the website also has a link to the email on it. Oh, okay. um, that, that's all that's necessary. Yes. Okay. okay. So the website is SusanBradfordArt.com. Okay. So that's Susan Bradford, B-R-A-D-F-O-R-D, dot mm -hmm. com. Mm -hmm. SusanBradfordArt.com. Mm -hmm. uh, they can get in touch with you then and order some of your materials. They're beautiful. Your artworks are lovely. I noticed that you, uh, my impression of the painting you have behind you, that's watercolor. No, that's oil and mixed oil. medium. Okay, mm -hmm. so I was going to ask you what your medium was that you liked uh, oils, I take it then. I do, I like oil, but I work sometimes in acrylic just because 
it's right. more expedient and it dries mm -hmm. quicker and it doesn't smell. Okay, uh, that's very good. Uh, I understand that. Uh, well, I forgot what I was going to ask you now. That's not very good, is it? No, but I'll clarify one thing while you're thinking. Oh, go ahead. Is that the mandalas are made with really simple materials. I draw them in pencil first, mm -hmm. one kind of tier at a time as I go out, and I color them in. It's really just like a big coloring book in a certain way um, mm -hmm. with Crayola magic markers, and then I outline it in a fine tip felt pen. Okay, I, I remember what it was, and I mentioned okay. this earlier. Uh, I had said that you were an author. What is the title of your book, and where is it available? Oh, it's called The Gift of Reiki. Mm -hmm. The um, Gift of Reiki, okay. Yes, and it's co-written with two of my students, mm -hmm. and it is a labor of love. It's been out for many years now, and it is really designed to be a beginning textbook for all Reiki students. So it's very broad in general. You could be in any school of Reiki and it will be helpful. Or you could just be interested in Reiki and and it is, yeah. So um, you can get it through Amazon. Um, you can get it through me. Mm -hmm. So same deal. Uh, if you go to the website and there is a, a link there that will take you straight to Amazon. And say the title again, please. The Gift of Reiki. Okay, and it is available on Amazon. Very yes. Good. Is this a paperback or is it an ebook? It's paperback. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. And can you give us what the price is on that? Are they charging? I'm not really sure what Amazon is charging, mm -hmm. but if you order from me, I charge $15. Mm -hmm. I don't really Plus, need okay. to make money on it. I just want to get it out there. And oh. mostly I give it to my students when, when you take a class from me, it's included in the price of Reiki One. Nice, very good, okay. Uh, I would like to uh, emphasize with the fact that uh, not only do you do it, you also have written about it. Yes. And, uh, otherwise you, you, you put yourself where your mouth is, as they say. <laughs> Yes, you know, yes, work yes, okay. yes. What do you see as your future endeavors to be once we're over this thing we're in? <laughs> it's a great question. Uh, part of that is that I don't know. And mm -hmm. then part of it is I will share with you that two of my friends and students, two other, not the ones who wrote the book, and I have been meeting um, we started off meeting in person and now we're meeting by Zoom every two weeks. And we are creating a new Reiki class. Now we're not creating a new school of Reiki. We're creating something that we feel will help people use their Reiki in a broader context that will open them up to the, the, their own power and the power that Reiki can exert in the world. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, exciting. It's really exciting to me. I can see there that, that it has tremendous possibilities. It does. Um, it does. As a shaman, I belong to several shaman groups, and we have uh, healings for the world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And everybody, you know, at a certain hour, a certain day of the month, etc., uh, everybody gets online and we don't connect with them. But we're online as a unified, unified mind, said, if you will. And so that opens up a lot of things there, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Uh -huh. It absolutely right. does. Yeah. Can, can you envision uh, expanding that to more than two other people besides yourself? And would you be charging for people to participate? Uh, in the beginning, um, when we're ready to launch this, well, of course, we had intended to launch it live, mm -hmm. but now we realize that hmm, we can't really, we don't want to wait, and we think it should get out there as quickly as possible. Yes. So I, we're going to just offer it, again, maybe a donation. You want to come. If you can't afford to 
give us anything, that's okay. Otherwise, just a donation will be fine. As we work out the kinks of it, and as we work out what it is that we really want to do with it. Mm -hmm. So I feel that there is a huge potential for this in the world. I have um, to agree with you uh, because I sense that uh, a lot of people are like lost. Absolutely. And, uh, they need some spiritual guidance that comes within their own spirituality. Correct. And, you know. <laughs> yes. Uh, the exactly. Form of being uh, spiritual. Right, right. And so I will share that there, there um, will be that we're not calling them attunements. Um, we're calling them activations. And there will be two different activations within this structure, this class. And it will help people to awaken to their own power. And that is really what I think it's all about. After uh, we're finished here, I will uh, ask you to stay online. I'm going to stop recording. Okay. Uh, I will have a couple of suggestions of places for you to take your book. Oh, okay, great. Thank you. Thank That's you. Thank you. Idea you have, and that uh, they're they're all very reliable. Yes, I would trust that from you. All right. Would you like to leave us a couple of last words about what it means to be inspired? <laughs> uh, it's um. It, I'll, I'll leave you with my my. My, the statement that I always put in all my biographies is that I feel that my creative work is spiritual and my spiritual work is creative. And that is how I try to lead my life. All right. This has been uh, Healing the Shaman's Way brought to you through Talk Story Today. Uh, and our guest has been Susan Bradford, Ray K. Master artist and author. Thank you so much, Susan, for being our guest. We appreciate it. Thank you Namaste. so much, Norm. Mm -hmm. Namaste.